Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. So we have a lot to talk about. As you can see, we have not one, two, three, four, but five systems out there to talk about in this update video. We have Hurricane Fiona, which is now a category four, as well as Tropical Storm Gaston. And then we have these three disturbances, one of which is an imminent threat to land. And that one headed to the Caribbean is going to be the main focus of this video. And so before I go into details please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update video on the tropics and you can also show your support for the channel by leaving a like on this video and so let's go ahead and get into all of these systems and we're going to be starting out with uh, tropical storm gaston and so here we have the latest cone forecast for the system and as of right now gaston has intensified it has winds of 65 miles per hour at the max and it is accelerating to the northeast at 16 miles per hour and so it is not expected to become a hurricane but it should peak near hurricane intensity and so i wouldn't be surprised if this actually manages to make it to a category one but we see that it's going to be loitering in the vicinity of the azores and then not really being a threat to land afterwards as we're going to be heading into the end of this week and into next week all right and let's go ahead and move on to major hurricane fiona and so here is it on satellite we can see the major storm churning it is an absolute monster right now but thankfully it is moving away from the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands so uh, impacts there if there are any happening right now they should gradually dissipate as the day goes on and as Fiona makes its way out and as of the latest corn forecast for it we're seeing here that Fiona has maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and it is moving to the north at 8 miles per hour and so as of now a tropical storm watch is in effect for Bermuda so there is good confidence that the center of Fiona is going to be passing west of the island but uh, it's likely that the island will be in that tropical storm force wind field and that's the reason they're under a tropical storm watch because such conditions are likely and so uh, if you guys are there you might want to look out for that as they're going to be headed into the end of this week and into the early part of next week and now let's move on to our disturbances so we have this tropical wave just about to emerge off the coast of Africa here and we're seeing that there is a 50% chance that we could have development. So a northward track is expected with this system once it is going to be emerging from the coast of Africa and we could see some development of it. So uh, we definitely want to watch this one. And if the favorability is going to persist for us to see development, then this chance is going to keep increasing. Then we have this other disturbance. This is a tropical wave that is well to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. So this one is expected uh, to make somewhat of a northwestward track and then start to track towards the west. And we're seeing that as of now, there is a low chance that we could see development. And as a matter of fact, this is the 2 a.m. update for this and it, it is nearly identified. So of course, the chance isn't going to be high immediately but it does have some unfavorable conditions up ahead for it so this is something that we might want to watch for in the future maybe for the caribbean if it is going to be continuing on that westward track but of course uh i'm going to be keeping you guys updated on what's happening with it and in terms of it and satellites here we have it we have all this shower and thunderstorm activity but of course the system is not very organized right now and moving on to the main focus of this video invest 98l or developing tropical storm that is going to be heading towards the Caribbean and uh, intensifying in the region and so we're seeing here that there is a high 90% chance that we could have development of this so it's almost a little bit certain that we're going to be seeing a tropical storm become of this and looking at the names for this hurricane season here we're seeing that the next name to be used is Hermine and uh, if we would have that wave of Africa developing the name after Hermine is Ian so these are the next two names to be used for this hurricane season and I think it's pretty likely that 98L is going to be acquiring the name Hermine but let's see what happens with it. it doesn't matter what name it acquires it is going to be bringing some serious impacts to some areas and if it enters the gulf of mexico that is just a story that we see a lot with storms that enter the gulf and rapidly develop and make landfall so let's go ahead and take a look at this in a bit more detail so we're looking at it on satellite right now and we're seeing that we have all of this shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it we're not seeing much organization but of course as time goes by, uh, we will likely see that happening once the system remains in conducive conditions, which are up ahead for it. So uh, some of this 
Shower and thunderstorm activities already affecting some areas such as uh, Venezuela as well as Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. And as it moves closer and closer to the region, it is going to be bringing all this shower and thunderstorm activity to sections of the Windward Islands. So uh, maybe areas all the way from Martinique going down to Grenada, including Barbados, are going to be feeling impacts from this as it makes its way by. And so uh, all this shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it is likely to increase as the system gets itself together and eventually becomes a tropical cyclone. And what about the future for it? Where is it going to go? Is it headed for Jamaica or is it headed for the Central American areas or even the Gulf Coast of the U.S.? So there are many possibilities. So there is somewhat of agreement among the various models here where we're seeing that the system is going to be entering the Caribbean, maybe with a northwestward-like track, but then eventually continuing westward before making a northwestward turn into the northwestern Caribbean. So um, this is sort of, as I said, the models are in agreement with this happening, but if we have the system closer to areas such as even Jamaica, Cuba, those areas will likely feel impacts from it. And remember that these tracks are to track the center of the system, not the size of it. So even if it remains offshore, but it is a massive system in terms of the size, areas could still feel impacts from this. And uh, even the Euro model was showing that Jamaica would feel some impacts. So uh, there have been many changes we're talking about a system that is several days out and of course uh, what you're seeing now isn't solid because we're not talking about an imminent threat but we're seeing here that uh, Euro is showing the system being in very close uh, proximity to the island of Jamaica headed to Monday of next week but of course this could change over the next couple of days here and then in terms of the intensity of it we're seeing here that we have quite a bit of models available and the majority are expecting that it will become a tropical cyclone and even a hurricane and I have good confidence that this will eventually become a hurricane but in terms of it uh becoming a uh, a major hurricane a cat three cat four that is all going to be dependent on conditions of course because if it moves say into the gulf of mexico and conducive conditions are there it is almost likely that we will see some rapid intensification of the system we've seen that too many times over the years ida laura michael and a lot more systems that have rapidly developed in the gulf of mexico or intensified in the gulf of mexico so uh this is definitely something that we want to watch the long term for it is is something that is uncertain right now but of course i'm going to be keeping you guys updated on the latest for it and then in terms of favorability of conditions out there in terms of the dry air we have a pocket of that dry air ahead of it and some might be infiltrating the system here so uh, this isn't expected to be very impactful on it though so we're expecting that over the next few days we will be seeing development and we could even have a named storm maybe by the end of this week again the next name to be used is hermine and then for the wind shear we have the red lines that that indicates unfavorable shear, the yellow that means neutral, and the green that means favorable. So there we have all that uh, shower and thunderstorm activity associated with 98L. So once it moves into the Caribbean, it is likely to encounter uh, conducive conditions, of course, in terms of that wind shear. So things are expected to become favorable ahead of the system. And of course, we could definitely see some development of it. But of course, guys, I'm going to be keeping you updated on the system as time goes by. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing another update video later today in the afternoon hours. So you can be on the lookout for that. And if you haven't already, you can tap the notification bell so that uh, you know when I post that video. And so, of course, guys, and so guys, that is really it for now. And if you have any questions, and so if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there as well. And just remember to always be weatherwise.